Hey guys, today I'm doing a video comparing a Benelli M2 to a Franke Affinity for the purposes of three gun shooting. Um, the Franke, I think, is a very overlooked shotgun for three gun, um, chiefly because it's essentially a nicer Stoger for maybe a couple hundred dollars more. Um, you can pick up a Franke for about 800 bucks, maybe a little bit less, just depending on what kind of discount you can get or what kind of deal you can get. Uh, through whatever uh, big box retailer or online retailer or local guy you can get it through. Um, the differences between the Affinity and the Stoger is that the Affinity is made by Benelli in Italy. Um, see right here it says made in Italy. I'll zoom in a little bit. Got the uh, made in Italy markings and you also if you flip to the other side it says right here Benelli Army SPA and up here Benelli USA, Akokeek, Maryland. So, what you're getting is basically Benelli's idea of what a Stoger should be, uh, not made in some third world crap hole. Um, it's pretty obvious from looking at the guns and from looking at Stogers, the finish on, like, for example, the receiver, uh, the finish on the bolt, uh, lots of little things remind me of an M2 rather than a Stoger. Um, it's just in general a much nicer gun. So the difference between the Benelli M2 and other Benellis uh, and the Stoger is on a Stoger, instead of having the recoil spring inside the buttstock, uh, there's a tail on the end of this bolt and as you pull the bolt to the rear, it pushes a spring that drops at an angle into the stock and there's a tube back here that that spring rides in. So instead of doing that, the Stoger system there's actually rails like you would have on a pump shotgun or probably other semi-auto shotguns that have gas systems. Maybe some of them, I don't know. Um, but more similar to what I'm familiar with on a pump shotgun, that right up here, and there's a spring inside of the handguard, and that's your action spring. It doesn't control, um, it doesn't have anything to do with uh, uh, the operation of the gun necessarily, because it's still recoil operated, it still has the Benelli inertia system, so under recoil this bolt goes forward just like the M2, um, but the action spring is up here under the handguard instead of in the stock. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take these guns down. Um, it's, it, this, the, the affinity is very similar to uh, uh, a Stoger in, in that regard, so I'm not going to go over that in detail. I'm going to go ahead and strip the guns down right now. One quick thing I want to note, uh, for whatever reason, the charging handle on the Franke is absurdly difficult to remove. Um, I can remove the, uh, the charging handle on my M2 just by yanking it out with my bare hands. I cannot do that no matter how hard I try on the Franke. I don't know what they did with the factory charging handle, but I've got pliers already set up just so I can get a good grip on this. And keeping in mind, all this is under spring tension. Uh, from this spring up here. So as soon as I yank this out, that's what's stopping this bolt from going further forward. So I'm going to keep my finger on this bolt. I'm going to yank up. There we got it. Let this guy come apart. And uh, the Benelli, this is a Terran Tactical uh, charging handle. All the Benelli charging handles will probably work with that. So you can see it's got the, uh, the slot. These are, zoom in for this too. These are fairly identical. Um, as far as uh, this part goes, they look to me functionally identical, and indeed if you stick the Benelli uh, bolt handle into the Franke bolt, I'm going to say Franke and Franchi a whole bunch of times, so just ignore that because I'm an idiot. It goes right in there, seems to work just fine, and it pulls out with a normal kind of amount of tension. I can pull it out by hand, but it's still retained in there quite well. All right, so I'm going to kind of work from front to back here. Uh, the Franke takes, I believe, the same style chokes as uh, most Berettas and probably Stogers as well. Uh, the Benelli choke is slightly longer, and you can actually put a Benelli choke in the Franke, and it will work. It'll just stick out a little bit. So this right here, this is the Franke barrel, and these are both 26-inch barrels. Um, this bead sight looks exactly like the one that came on my Benelli from the factory. Um, the, the site that I have on here is a true glow, so it's a little bit different. Um, but yeah, not much difference in terms of uh, the finish or the build quality on the Franke barrel at all. I would say they're roughly equivalent. Uh, the one thing that I will note is if you go back towards uh, the end of the barrel, you can see that 
the hard chrome on the Benelli is on the outside of that too, whereas the Franke just has what looks like parkerization on the outside. Um, but I believe if you look inside, and if you look inside the barrel on the Franke, it does appear that they used hard chrome for the actual barrel lining itself, just not the, uh, the sort of barrel extension that locks into the receiver back here. Okay, kind of big picture overview of the receivers. Uh, again, the receiver on the Franke, it has a uh, longer uh, magazine tube from the factory. It's a four-round tube uh, without any sort of extension. Um, it is held on, if you can see this, it's got a retentive cap, so the spring is actually still in there. Uh, my Benelli was originally an M2 Tactical, and it did not have any sort of retentive cap, although I don't know if the M2 fields have that cap that you need like snap ring pliers or something similar to get out of there. Um, the action spring for the Franke is up here. That's all that is. There's no gas system up here. Again, it's an inertia operated shotgun. Uh, working the way back, I've done port work on this M2, so this is not factory, but on the M2, the receiver, this sort of angle that's here, continued straight all the way down here, and there was a nice hard right edge all the way up. It's a very difficult uh, port to load into, and the affinity from the factory, although it's not great, they have sort of recessed the port. They didn't bevel it. I, I wish they would have beveled it from the factory just to make loading a little easier, um, but it's not bad. It could be a lot worse, and one thing that you'll notice right away is when you do want to do loading work, you can see my M2's serial number it is about a millimeter from where I cut into it. The Franke's serial number is way back by the trigger guard. If you're doing port work, there is nothing up there for you to cut into. Either. I mean, unless you go all the way down really far into here and you start removing the uh, uh, where it was made and the importer, Benelli USB. Uh, sorry, Benelli USA Corp, Aco, Keith Maryland, that's the importer's mark since this is made in Italy. Um, you're not going to cut into anything important on the Franke. Zoom back out. Uh, working your way back, I take down the exact same way, um, and I adjusted the stock on the, on, on the Franke earlier today at the range, and they seem to have the exact same shim system as well. Um, you can see there are some cosmetic external differences. The shape of the trigger guard externally is a bit different. Um, and if you look at the trigger, there's a flat back here on the edge of this trigger. We're corresponding to the flat back here where it's you've got a curved trigger guard on the M2. And the trigger itself is curved too. Um, and one thing I want to point out, if you look at this, I already stopped at the gunsmith and had him uh, actually uh, mill off the dome on the bolt release and drill and tap it, we're going to go ahead and put a, uh, an oversized Terran Tactical bolt release on there. So that's the only thing that's really been changed on this Franke so far. Uh, working your way back, I've got actually a Comfortech stock on my M2 that came off of a Supernova with a little bit of Dremel work. It fit right on the M2. Um, this came originally with a stock that looked a bit more like this. Um, this Franke is a youth compact model. Uh, it's a young girl that's learning three gun that's going to be shooting this particular gun. So we got her the compact model and the length of pull on that model is about two inches shorter than on a standard M2 or Franke or a Stoger. Um, there are compact models of the M2 and the, uh, the Stoger, but I believe they're, they're almost like, I think it's something like, uh, oh, I don't remember, maybe like five eighths of an inch or three quarters of an inch longer than the Franke. The Franke had the shortest uh, compact stock, so that's part of the reason why we went with this shotgun for her, because she's sort of small statured at the moment, and as she grows, we'll be able to add spacers on back here for her. Um, one thing I did note, I, I assume they did this so you couldn't possibly put a Comfortech stock on an Affinity, um, but I mentioned this stock is off of a Nova, and the Nova, even though there's no spring back here, it actually has, has a dummy tube uh, that the stock bolts to. So like M2 stocks and Nova stocks, Supernova stocks, a regular Nova doesn't have interchangeable stocks. Sorry, a Supernova stock um, are more or less almost interchangeable. Uh, the Franke does have that little dummy tube back here, but it's much shorter. It comes up like right here. So you can't use M2 stocks on it without, I would think, probably removing the... Uh, uh, 
finding a tube off of another gun and hopefully if the threads matched you could put an M2 tube on it and then you could put an M2 stock on it because I think right here they're virtually identical but don't quote me on that because I haven't tried it I'm just sort of supposing at this point. Alright to keep things simple I've uh, drawn a dividing line on my paper here and notated which side is Franke and which side is Benelli. Um, looking at the bolt and bolt carrier again they do seem very, very similar. Um, the finish is all but very similar. Obviously, you don't have the Benelli inertia system or written on or engraved rather into the bolt carrier on the Franke, but the proof marks even are identical on, on both of them. I assume this stuff is probably made in the same factory. Um, you can see uh, the, the carrier rails on the Benelli are slightly different and different shaped from the Franke. And the reason for that is because the Franke has to interface with this carrier back here. So when you stick that in, you get the bigger picture. It's actually pretty much the same shape. Uh, they take down similarly. Obviously, the Franke doesn't have the tail on, uh, on the end of it, but it's got the same style firing pin. You just remove this pin here that retains it. You can pull the firing pin out, and then you can pull the bolt out, and the inertia spring is inside there as well. I'm not going to take it apart. That's pretty simple stuff. Um, the takedown pin itself is looks identical to me. Um, the trigger groups are interesting because it seems like other than some minor things like on the Franke your cartridge drop lever is black and on the uh, M2 it's chrome. I'm sure there's some Benelli's that have black ones too but on, the, on my particular M2 it's chrome. But it seems like the external portions of it are really what is truly different. Um, from here down it's just styled different. There's an F stamped on the bottom of the Franke uh, carrier, or sorry, the trigger guard, for instance. And on the Benelli, it's it's rounded, and then it's got sort of a uh, cutout here for your fingers behind it. Whereas on the Franke, it's just got a flat back here. Uh, the Benelli is also relieved for that triangle-shaped safety. You can see this here. I'll zoom in a little bit. So it's got a relief molded into this uh, trigger guard for that safety because it's reversible. And I'm pretty sure that we're going to be able to get that oversized tear and tactical safety to work here too. We're just going to need to do a little bit of Dremel work to relieve inside of there and make room for that triangle shape because the Franke comes from the factory with just a plain round safety. I'm not sure if the Stoger guys have to do that same sort of thing to get the uh, tear and tactical safety to work on theirs, but I, I know there are some guys who have done it. Um, so. Moving on from that, the more important part when it comes to 3-gun is the carrier. You can see on my Benelli, which is this one right here, I have a welded and extended carrier. This started life as a regular factory carrier that got sent off to Jeff Cochran at Searoms, and uh, he extended that and welded it up for me. Um, I additionally have uh, knocked off some edges on the interior here and polished this, and it's got some scratches on it from use. The Franke carrier looks to me identical in every regard. Now I know the Stogers are slightly different. You've got to cut more off of this edge back here. You can see that. On the Stoger, you can use a Benelli carrier, but you have to cut into this and make room, and there's also a notch. But when I'm looking at these, they look identical, and I'm going to take them apart and, uh, and uh, compare them side by side. All right, I got the trigger group stripped down. got the carriers out here. And just comparing them side by side, I don't really see any differences. I mean, except where mine's been modified, they look identical. And just, you know, lining everything up. And uh, zoom in a little bit here. So lining everything up, it looks pretty much the same. I mean, every all the holes line up and everything. And... For all I know, it's the exact same part made on the exact same machines, and it wouldn't surprise me a bit. Um, so what we're going to do for this gun is we're going to actually uh, skip uh, shipping this off to Jeff because we want to kind of we're, we're training uh, this young lady at the moment, so we want to get her up and running as soon as possible. So we're going to get a Terran Tactical Carrier and uh, test that out on this gun. I expect it to run well because honestly, I mean, if there's any difference between these two parts other than what's been modified on mine. I just can't see it. Um, they, they just look identical, which is good news because on the Stogers, they're slightly different, and if you don't have a little know-how, um, you're going you're gonna to have to spend some time modifying that carrier and making it work with the Stoger. 
Uh, moving on from there, other parts one at a time. Let's see, hammer. Franchi over here. Benelli. This is the Benelli. This is the Franchi. Uh, again, for all the world, it looks to me, and I'm going to very carefully try not to confuse these when we're going to put them together. They just, they look like it's the exact same part. So I assume that the Franchi is going to be compatible with any Benelli hammers um, that are on the aftermarket. Um, not a very common piece, but the, uh, the bolt stop tooth, don't see any differences there. The, uh, the pin that holds the bolt stop tooth to the, uh, to the carrier uh, was not staked on the Franchi, on the, sorry, the Franchi. Um, unlike Stoger's, which are staked, so it came apart very easily, just like the Benelli. Um, in order to remove the hollow pin in the trigger group, you've got the same D-clip. Looks exactly the same. Cartridge drop lever. Uh, looks identical, just black instead of chrome. Uh, that's the only difference I can see. I bet you could swap these over no problem. Looks like the exact same part. Hollow trigger group pin. Same story. Hammer spring and hammer spring cap. Looks pretty much identical. My Benelli's got more wear on these parts because I've got like 4,000, 3,000, 3,500, who knows how many rounds through it. Uh, carrier spring and plunger. Looks pretty identical. Um, the washer, so on my Benelli M2 group, this washer where the uh, carrier spring plunger interfaces, that just falls out whenever I take it apart. And uh, on the Franchi, it is stuck in there. I didn't try it real hard to pull it out, but it doesn't come out on its own, so that's nice. Oh, what else have I got here? Have I got everything covered? Yep, we're going to move on to the, uh, the trigger and the safety. So one quick interesting note on the Franchi, when I took this rear pin out that stops the, uh, the trigger from pivoting, the trigger guard is small enough that it causes it to stop. On the Benelli, when you take that rear pin out, all the, the spring tension of the trigger return spring is free to snap this forward, and what usually happens is this spring on the trigger return will fly out if you're not careful. It's just hanging in there by a thread. All right, so I got the trigger out, and uh, very similar, um, not quite identical. Obviously, there's a flat cut back here on the back of the Franchi because of the trigger guard, whereas on the Benelli, it is rounded, although I do wonder if you can swap these parts over, and I think I'm going to try that here in a bit. Uh, the trigger return spring is the same on both. It just kind of falls out. And interesting on the Franchi that the disconnector appears to be hard chrome or some other material. It looks like hard chrome to me. Uh, whereas on the Benelli, it's the same, what looks like a melanite finish or a QPQ, some sort of nitriding, um, uh, sort of a shiny black finish that doesn't uh, allow any rust. But they appear to be identical. I'm not going to pull the disconnector out. I mean, at this point, it seems uh, kind of superfluous to go that far. But if you line these up, you can see internally inside the gun, all the points line up. They're all they're functionally the same. This hole lines up back here. Uh, you start to see a little bit of difference. The trigger is just kind of different shaped. And it's shaped specifically for the, the trigger guard that it goes into. Um, but I am going to try putting uh, a Benelli trigger in the Franchi, specifically because there are 922R parts uh, that are available for the Benelli and not so much for the Franchi. So I'm going to try that out next. Alrighty, so Benelli trigger installed in the Franchi. Uh, can't seem to get it to go all the way on safe. So I'm wondering if that means that there's a difference uh, in the safety. Maybe some material needs to be removed from the trigger to get it to work if you wanted to do a 922R. Um, but notice that the, the Benelli trigger doesn't stick as far down into the trigger guard as the Franchi one did. So even though there's differences there because it's a lot shorter, it could probably still be made to work. So I imagine you could get this working if you had the time or patience to do so. Um, the safety thing, yeah, I, I imagine 
Maybe you just gotta switch to a Benelli safety at the same time. Maybe I'll try that next. All right, so Franke on the left, Benelli on the right. You can see the uh, uh, the roll pin that retains the uh, the spring for the safety detent is pretty much identical. They look same size even. Uh, the detent itself is pretty much identical. Um, the safety, get the tear and tackle safety over here. My tear and tackle safety was slightly different um, from my Benelli safety, but this looks to me pretty close to the same, maybe a little bit off. I'm going to try putting this uh, guy in the Franke and seeing if it makes a difference. If not, I might go grab my. Uh, sorry if I didn't get that on camera. Here's the two safeties. Gotta watch what I'm doing here. So here's a uh, Franke, and here's a uh, Terran Tackle Benelli safety. So we're going to try sticking this Terran Tackle safety in there. I think it's going to take a little bit of Dremel work to make it work, but we'll see. Alrighty, got the uh, Terran Tactical Safety installed in the Franke trigger group with the Franke trigger, and it does work. Um, I think I still need to remove a bit of material because you see this is that's on fire, and it doesn't quite seat all the way. Uh, I think because of the head of the uh, triangular head of that Terran Tactical Safety is running that trigger group, so I think just a tiny little bit of material removed with the Dremel, and it'll seat just fine. But as it is, uh, that's safe can't pull the trigger, that's fire, I can pull the trigger. So right out of the box, not even needing mods, that will work. So that's excellent news. All right, so with all that similarity, the question arises, can you run a Benelli trigger group in a Franke or vice versa? And I found out earlier today at the range that the answer to that question is yes. Um, I put my Benelli trigger group in the Franke and aside from the aforementioned cosmetic differences, it ran just fine. So I've got the Franke receiver here and the Benelli trigger group. And I don't have a bolt in the gun, but trust me, it does run. I'm going to go ahead and cock this, put it on safe, and lock stock. I'm going to put it in there. Line my hole up. Insert the uh, trigger pin for my Benelli, because why not? If I can get this line, it's a lot easier to do this with the bolt in place. Slam that guy in there, and there you go. You can see, cosmetically, the trigger group doesn't line up with the receiver, um, but it does function just fine, and I was able to test out how well a uh, lifted and extended carrier would work in the Franke. The answer to that is excellent. Works just fine, locks open, everything worked as normal. All right, last order of business for the three gun world. It's really nice if you have an oversized uh, bolt release on your shotgun because they typically come with these tiny little buttons and they're hard to press, hurt your thumb, and when you're in a hurry you can you can really mess up a thumbnail or, or just miss the button entirely and get really frustrated when you're trying to load your shotgun on the clock. Um, the part on the Franke, unlike the Stoger, seems to be pretty much identical and almost interchangeable with the Benelli. Uh, so again, I had this, uh, I took this to my gunsmith earlier today, Rick McDowell, competition specialties in Osceola, Iowa. Great dude. Uh, he milled this flat on the Franke because originally uh, the Franke had a nice domed head here. Uh, the Benelli comes flat and serrated. It'll really mess you up if you hit it wrong for speed loading. I had him uh, drill and tap that too. But the Franke had a nice smooth dome surface and it's actually larger uh, than the Benelli's. And when I saw that I thought, huh, maybe the, uh, the hole in the Benelli's receiver is smaller to compensate. And nope, you can actually drop the uh, Franke uh, nice bigger button right into the Benelli receiver and it works. Uh, they got the same spring uh, and they use a roll pin uh, to hold them in place. So on the Stogers, what makes these a little different is I think this little thing here, instead of being solid and steel, is hollow. And there's a second piece up here, like it's a multi-piece deal. I don't know how it works. I haven't taken apart a Stoger personally. I've just seen a video of them. But uh, Franke, in this regard, as with uh, many others, more similar to the Benelli system than the Stoger system. All right, so this has been a sort of rough overview of the uh, M2 versus Affinity uh, with an eye towards use in 3-gun. Um, 
I've got to say, if you're looking at a Stoger and uh, your idea is to do a Benelli M2 build on the cheap, you really ought to just spend the extra couple hundred bucks and get an Affinity. Uh, you've basically got all the M2 quality, just a few corners cut here and there, like not having uh, chrome on the extension on the barrel and a few other things, and you know, having more weight up here with having the recoil system up here, whereas in the Benelli it's balanced more towards the back. Um, really, really small things uh, when you're talking about spending $800 on the Affinity versus $1,200 for an M2, maybe more, maybe a little bit less, but $400 price difference and, you know, maybe only about uh, $200, $250 more than, than a Stoger. But just the parts compatibility alone is well worth it because pretty much everything off of a Benelli will run seemingly right out of the gate. Um, this is going to be the first video in a series. We're going to be putting a uh, magazine tube extension on the Franke. Uh, we're going to be installing that Terran Tactical Oversized Bolt uh, release that we talked about. We're going to do a Terran Tactical Carrier, Terran Tactical Safety, uh, Terran Tactical uh, 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 Oversized Bolt Handle as well. And I'm going to be opening up the port on this to make it a little bit nicer to load because right now uh, this is kind of torture compared to this one. This one you can just throw stuff in here all the time. This won't screw up your thumb at all. As I go into thumb into this, everything feels rough. I just feel all these hard, rough edges wanting to cut my thumb open in the Benelli. It's so nice. But we'll, uh, we'll get that taken care of. I'll try to do a video on the port work, even though I'm not going to get too deep into that because that's uh, really kind of, I mean, if, if you don't have the patience uh, to work with it, you really ought to just send it off to be done. That's not, you know, just plug and play. That's, you're seriously cutting into an expensive shotgun receiver. And guess what? It's not like an AR-15, you can't buy a spare receiver. You screw up that receiver, you're getting a whole new shotgun. And you'll have all the parts except the receiver at that point because you've got all the rest of it that you didn't screw up. But, uh, um, so, uh, if you got any questions, any, any other, uh, anything you want to know about the differences uh, between the Franke and the Benelli that I didn't cover, uh, go ahead and let me know in the comments. If you like my videos, uh, please subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching.